All right, here we are doing part two. This is the parameter settings on the programmer, JR Xbus servo programmer. This is an A9912 servo. This applies to any JR programmable servo. Um, one question that I received about the first video is, it doesn't matter which one you plug into, one or two. It does not. Just plug the servo in, plug your power in, one of them, and you're ready to go. So we'll get this fired up here. There we go. Now, I would highly recommend you watch the first video if you haven't to learn how to set these ID numbers. So we're going to go into scan mode. This is all covered in the first video. That gets us on the, the servo that's plugged in, servo 4, sub ID 1. So the very first parameter is servo ID. We have already covered that, part 1. Sub ID is covered. The version and model number, that's just information about the servo itself. You don't want to change any of that. The first one that matters is holding. What the holding is, is holding power. So it shows you, it allows you to turn the holding power up or down. It's set at zero. Everything's set at zero at the, from, the, from the factory. Um, personally, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to turn this up because what this does is when you try to move this arm, from center, it just gives it all it's got right now. Where if you turn it down, we'll turn it way down so you can kind of see it dramatized here. If you turn it all the way down, it's soft as can be. You can move it. There's hardly any power. I mean, I can move it like nothing. So you want the servo to give you everything it's got. So at default, it's not horrible, but it's kind of soft. I mean, you can see it moving around. Turn this all the way up, and it gives you everything it's got. No, I can't move it whatsoever. I mean, it won't move. So, I highly recommend turn that all the way up. Don't even bother with any other setting, because then you get the maximum power that it will give you. The next one, dumping. Dumping is a translation from Japanese. It actually means damping. And what that does is it keeps the servo from overshooting center. So when you, let's say you're just full stick, full left, full right, and you just let go, and it goes back to center, as fast as possible. This number actually makes it so the servo will slow down right before it gets to center to make sure that it hits center every single time. The higher you put this number, the more it will slow down to make sure that it hits center. If you decrease this number, go negative, it will actually go all the way to center and go past and then back to it. Obviously, I believe that's like that's really bad. You don't want that. So this it goes from I think one to fifty. Yeah, one to fit. It goes negative fifty to positive fifty. So the positive number actually sl slows the servo down right before it hits center, so it well, doesn't overshoot. Um, at zero, they don't really overshoot. But these servos are fast enough, especially these twelve volt ones, that you kind of need to run that number up to 20, 25. I've been running them at 30 and have had really good luck. But if if you don't understand, I'm trying to think the best way to explain it so it's actually in the layman's terms, is you just, you're just letting the servo slow down just enough that where it doesn't miss center. And the higher you put this number, the more um, it's looking ahead and make sure that it doesn't miss center. Now, when I say slow it down, you can't visually see it slow down. I mean, they're so fast that it's almost, uh, maybe in a helicopter, you might be able to tell this number a little more, but on an airplane, if you, if you run it at 30, you cannot see that it's slow down in any way, shape, or form. It just, bam, right back to center. 
and it hits center every single time with it with this number higher so that's what the dumping is the dumping is actually damping and it makes sure that it doesn't overshoot the next one is dead band what dead band is is how much movement does the servo need to see to try to react to it so you're telling it you want it at 1500 pulse width which is dead center and the control surface is loading it enough to off that it actually puts power to it to get it back to center if you get this too tight the dead band too tight it will actually the servos will start bouncing or oscillating which is not a good thing um, you want to run it as tight as you can and not have oscillation the negative number actually makes it tighter so it's making the dead band really close together and the positive number makes it wider in this particular case when you're programming these you want to get that number as, as far in the negative as you can without getting any oscillation all you got to do is hook up your control surfaces fly the plane a few times and uh, once you've flown it if you land or you notice when you when you uh, let go of the stick or when your engines running you're getting oscillations and you need to turn that you can actually you need to increase that number but you want to run it as, as far in the negative as you possibly can to get the best performance I've, it only goes to minus 10 and we've on the this is on an extreme flight laser um, and several other aerobatic planes minus 8 seems to be the number but you may have to run it a little bit lower than that all right the next one is boost boost is the power applied to start the motor if you want everything it's got right when it starts up or if you want it um, to have less you can with boosts I've just been leaving that at zero alarm level there's actually two alarm functions there's, there's alarm level and alarm delay on an electric powered brushless motor you can especially with a speed controller you, you can hear that beeping sound whenever you whenever it is armed or disarmed this works the same way as it will actually beep through the servo if it's getting overloaded I don't know if there's a situation where you need this but it's in there so you can do alarm level you can make it to where it goes off earlier or later based on the power being applied to the servo and the delay is exactly that it will delay it so many seconds before it goes off I'm sure there's an application where this would be handy but I haven't figured that out this is really cool here this is the angle of travel their default to 120 degrees so you know 120 total but with this programmer you can actually set it oh I went to the wrong uh, button you can turn this knob and set it at 180 which a lot of scale guys would like with flaps and whatnot where it, the, the arm will be perfectly straight and rotate all the way around and perfectly straight again it also has 150 this here is really powerful for 3d planes if you need a lot of throw you can run shorter arm and still get the throw and have more power applied to the surface um, you got to be super careful with that because you could overdrive your servo if you're not careful um, I don't I haven't tried it on 150 I know a lot of guys that have and it works really well but that's a feature that's only in this program or you can't do it with a transmitter you can't do it with anything but this so that's that's pretty cool 120 is default that's what most every servo is shipped as which is more than enough most of the time slow start put that on what that is is when you turn the radio on when the servos move back to center they go real slow to keep from damaging your gear train it's just a good idea I don't I don't know why you wouldn't want that on 
but somebody might. And then stop mode, this is the last one. What this is, is if it loses receiver signal, it's similar to fail safe, where if it loses receiver signal, it will just let the, the servo either hold or go free. If you got them getting together on multiple surfaces, put it, I would highly suggest putting it on free. But if they're just individual, Putting it on hold is probably the way to go. I don't. I hope that we never ever have to check this feature, but it is something that you're, you do want to consider. Do you want it in free mode or do you want it in hold? And that's it. That's the last of the. That's the last feature on here. Um, I was trying to think if there was anything else to cover, but the biggest ones are holding. Power, turn that all the way up. You're damping, you want to run that um, as high in the positive numbers you can so it doesn't overshoot the center. The dead band, you want to run it in the negative as far as you can so the surface doesn't oscillate. And boost alarm, alarm delay, you know, angle is something you may or may not want to use with that 150. Slow start, you want those on. In the stop mode free. So that when you break it down, it's pretty simple. And when you're ganging servos together, you know clearly you want to make sure you got all of them on the same settings here. I hope that this video makes life a lot easier on your initial setup. And uh, when, by doing it with a bench, when you stick it in the plane, it sure makes it a lot easier to program and make it ready to go. So if you got any questions, comments. Leave them on the uh, comment section in YouTube and we'll try to answer it as fast as possible. Or you can contact me off of my website, fortitude.rc.com. And uh, hopefully see you at the flying field soon.